Today on this Thursday, we're going to celebrate this, for a special voted Mass, a Mass in honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal High Priest. The Lord has sworn an oath you will not change. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for your glory and the salvation of the human race will to establish Christ as the eternal high priest, grant that the people he has gained for you by his blood may through their participation in his memorial experience the power of his cross and resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire, there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered. In his zeal, he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word, he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness. You heard threats at Sinai, at Horeb, avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come, to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons, and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you, and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death our name will not be such. O Elijah, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, wrought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power. Beneath him flesh was brought back into life. In life he performed wonders, and after death marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illumine the world, the earth sees and trembles. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all people see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. All who worship graven things are put to shame, who glory in the things of naught. All gods are prostrate before him. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. What is the real way we should pray? What's the purpose of our many catalogs of prayers? As Jesus calls us to task on the way that we pray today, he invites us to pray the prayer we are most famous for remembering, the most famous prayer ever recited, the Our Father. He is showing us how we are meant to pray. Not just that we just say some words, but that we need to say the words that reflect the essence of what we are doing when we pray, of what we are seeking in our prayer, of what we are meant, the fruit we are meant to bear in our prayer. The Our Father, if we take it and we mean it when we say it, if we get down to the depths of its meaning, is in essence the perfect prayer. Because it calls us to do the thing that God desires us most to do. As Jesus says at the very end of this passage, if you forgive others, your heavenly Father will forgive you. It is calling us to task. If we mean what we say when we pray it, then we are setting the expectation, the commandment that we are meant to follow, to forgive. We have to mean what we say. The real essence of prayer, especially recited prayers, is not that we just try to say things as if we're just, you know, it's like a slot machine where you put in the right amount and then you get out what you want. The words of the prayers are meant to call us to something. As our Lord Jesus models for us, as he makes his words count, he, the eternal high priest, as we celebrate in this Mass, makes the words that he prays to the Father effective in our lives, as we see in the Last Supper, as we see on the cross, as we see in that great high priestly prayer that he makes at the Last Supper. His words are effective. He means the words that he prays to the Father. And that is what he challenges us to imitate, is not just to make sounds but to make prayers. When I pray the Our Father, when I pray the Mass and say the words that I say at Mass, do they mean something to me or are they just sounds that come out of my mouth? Do they mean something? Have I gotten to the root, to the depth of their meaning so that when I pray them, they can change something in me? So that when I pray them, the fruit that I'm asking for in prayer can actually blossom? Do they mean something to me? I invite you to take some moments to reflect upon that um, as I need to step out for a quick minute. I just invite you to take stock of those. Take stock of those words in your own life.
To God, excuse me, to God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed. For his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her, let us pray to the Lord. For the peoples of all the world, that the Lord may graciously preserve harmony among them, let us pray to the Lord. For ourselves and our own community, that the Lord may graciously receive us as a sacrifice acceptable to himself, let us pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we may be spared our loss of life and property during this hurricane season, we pray to the Lord. And for our own intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith, we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice, and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. To all of you joining us on social media, I invite you to pray with me in active spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. This is the body that will be given up for you. This is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that through our partaking in this sacrifice, which your Son commanded to be offered in his memory, you may make us together with him an everlasting oblation to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. I just invite you all just a reminder about our Sacred Heart uh, devotions we'll be doing tomorrow. We have Mass at noon as normal, as well as we will have Adoration until 3 p.m. after Mass with an Adoration and chap Divine Mercy Chaplet. Um, and if there's anything else I missed, just stay tuned to our Facebook page. We have updates and all that on there. Thank you all for joining us, and have a blessed day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known, that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate.